Amen? Amen. I want to thank you, church family, for making the trip to St. Catherine of Siena. You know, we had our choir there, and many of you were willing to get on the bus or drive and show up to worship with our, our sister parish. So I really want to say, you know, I'm grateful for everyone participating in that and um, just allowing yourself to, you know, to be present and staying for dinner. Monsignor Browser said there was a higher attendance, you know, this time than previous year. So I'm very, very happy to, to hear that y'all had a great time and just sharing fellowship, you know, sharing, worshiping God and enjoying each other's company. So I, I really appreciate everyone showing up and everything that the pastoral council committee did as well and helping and of course uh, our music director Ms. Tanya and all the choir. Amen. 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 So unfortunately it was my hope. It was really my hope to be there. I was really excited. I, I love Pentecost Sunday. You know it's divine providence that when we got together it wasn't just you know a Saturday in, in May but on Pentecost Sunday. That's the day that we celebrate their church's birthday. And to see all of us, you know, take that trip to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ and say, Catherine, I'm sure God was smiling. I'm sure God was proud of all of us of doing that, of coming together as one, you know, bringing all of our, our, our gifts, our talents, ourself as, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ together. And um, unfortunately, because of my illness, I wasn't able to, to make it. But I was praying for all of you. I'm sure you were you know, we're praying for me, so I thank you for your prayers as well and all those who pray for me to have the uh, speedy recovery. Today we serve at the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity. And this is the foundation of our faith. Yeah. You know, in order for us to be strong, we have to know to whom we belong. Mm -hmm. Come on. In order for us to be strong, we have to know to whom we belong. When Jesus in the gospel he talks about he's always talking about his father he talks about his father so much he said his father does these works and he wants to glorify his father he came to do the will of the father but also we hear in the gospel our lord talks about the holy spirit he never forgot to mention the holy spirit and he says to the apostles he said i want to give you so much i want to pour out my wisdom my knowledge into your heart, into your soul, but it's so much, it's like an ocean. It's impossible for you to contain the wisdom and the knowledge I want to give to you. St. Augustine is a saint who was born in North, North Africa, and he's considered a church father, which means his writings are so powerful, are so relevant, that we read his commentary on scripture to this day. We still read it. He is a doctor of the church, meaning that any Christian, no matter what spirituality you practice within our Catholic faith, you can go to St. Augustine, read his writings, and you encounter Jesus. You start to learn about our Lord, you start to learn about God in a powerful way, because of his faith first, but also his wisdom. He is a, a giant. In fact, his writings call the confessions. He wrote about how he was you know, uh, he was unbaptized uh, as a baby, as a child, and he went through this whole journey. His mother was Catholic, St. Monica, but he went this whole journey searching for God, and he lived a very, very simple life. And he looked at all these different philosophies, and then finally he, he found God, or really God was able to find him. He was able to, to encounter God and come to the Catholic faith. And that book is considered a classic for literature. But he was thinking to himself, you know, he's this intelligent man. He thought about God as Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And he wanted to understand God in his mind. And he kept going around and around. He just couldn't understand God. How can God be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? He was confused. He didn't really understand. So he kept meditating, thinking. And he's walking down the shore. And there's a boy who is going out to the, to the sea. He's, he's getting this little, this little cup, and he takes the cup, and he goes to the sea, and he tries to pour that water into this hole. And he's going back and forth. And St. Augustine, he says, what are you doing? 
He said, well, I'm trying to fill this hole you know, with, with the, the, the ocean. I'm trying to take the ocean and fill it into this small hole. And he said, well, that's impossible. You know, what you're doing is impossible. And then the boy turned to him and said, you want to understand God, the Holy Trinity. That's impossible. So we don't understand, St. Augustine realized we can't understand God with our mind, that he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We want to understand with eyes of faith. We understand with our heart that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Who is God the Father? God the Father is the role of creator. When we think about creation in scripture, it refers to God as our creator. He is the one who created everything that is visible and invisible. So he created all of creation, you know, which includes us and the animals. He also created the angels. We look to God the Son as the redeemer. We look at Jesus. He came to redeem us, to save us as savior. And we think of God the Holy Spirit as sanctifier. He comes to us to make us like Jesus. That's his role. He makes us be transformed to become Jesus. That's our vocation. That's our only vocation, to be Jesus. But we only can become Jesus through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit leads us in prayer. He helps us to pray. He helps us to know our sins. He helps us to know our virtues. He helps us to develop our talents. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He makes us sanctified, which means he, he makes us like Jesus. That's what it means. But each divine person is equal. So God the Son is not less than God the Father. God the Holy Spirit is not less than God the Son and God the Father. Each divine person is unique. But each divine person is equal. Each divine person is God. And yet there's only one God. It's hard to fathom, right? It's a mystery. But that's a good thing. If you can understand God perfectly, then that's not God, right? So we can't compare God to anything on earth. So I can't give you like a perfect analogy, like, okay, well, just think about this, and now you understand the Trinity. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. We cannot fully understand God as Trinity. It's a mystery. No one can fully understand God. But we realize that there's aspects to help us to have some type of window, some type of insight about God as Trinity and what that means for us in a practical way. So in a practical way, it means that God is the source of life. He is divine life. And God is three divine persons. So we can relate to some degree in understanding this in this way. We look at an animal. You know, we all have maybe a pet or a dog or a cat. Pet, we know our animals or pets, they exist. We know that an animal exists. We don't say that an animal is in our mind. It's not a fantasy. It's not an ideal. Animals exist. We can touch them, feel them. We can see them move, right? So they are, they have being, meaning they exist. But they are not persons. No animal, even how much you love your pet, your pet is not a person. We are a person. Each one of us is one person. We have, we're one human person. Animals exist, but they're not persons. So there's zero persons, but they exist. So if animals have no identity as a person, we have an identity as one person, then God can be three. Why not for God to be three divine persons to be one God, only one God? So we see that God draws us to understand that we share in God's likeness and that we are persons. We're a person. That's how we share the image and likeness of God, that we have being, we exist. So not only does God create us, but God also keeps us alive. He keeps us having being, meaning exist, just to exist. Even after we die, we don't disappear. We still are a person. Each one of us, after we pass, our loved ones, you're still a human person. You're not an angel. You know, we hear songs and things like that. When you die, you don't become an angel. We always become who we are as human beings. We're a human person. So after we die, we're still a human person. So God reveals to us that he always has life. God is infinite in life. Amen. But God didn't want to share that life 
by himself. So God the Father always existed. But God the Son was begotten of the Father. So God the Father is like the lover. And God the Son is love. He's beloved. So God the Father begot the Son from all eternity. And God the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. So he is the personification of the act of love. So the love between God the Father and God the Son is the Holy Spirit. And so it's not two divine persons becoming one, it's one unique divine person, which is the Holy Spirit. So God the Father is a lover, God the Son is love, and God the Holy Spirit is personifies the love between the Father and the Son. So this is the teaching of our faith as Catholics. When we begin to pray, what we do is unique. You know, I went to, uh, like I said, to Temple. I had a meeting with the uh, president of Temple and all the faith leaders. And all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, they don't pray the way that we pray. When we pray, we always say in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So we do that because the foundation of our faith that Jesus came to reveal to us is not that he's just Savior. He came to reveal to us of the Holy Trinity because no one could understand or come to the conclusion of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's only that God could reveal to us. We would never know it unless Jesus revealed it. So Jesus revealed that to us. So we'll, we always begin the prayer with the Trinity. And when I give you a blessing, I don't give a blessing and just say, in the name of Jesus, right? I never say that. I say in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So when I give a blessing, it's always in the name of the Holy Trinity. And it shows our expression of our faith, the equality and the unity of the Trinity. So we never hear, when Jesus said baptize, he didn't say baptize in the name of me, right? He didn't say that. He said baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So even in baptism, we see that the prayer even our brothers and sisters in Christ are not Catholic, they use that Trinitarian formula. They acknowledge Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the foundation of our faith. Without that, we are not Christians. We can't be Christians if we don't believe in the Trinity. We're not Christians. That's the fundamental foundation of our faith. That's what Jesus came to reveal, really. He came to reveal the Father, Himself, and the Holy Spirit as one. So, Jesus draws us. He draws us into this mystery yes. that we are loved by God yes. in so many different ways. God as our Father. God as our brother, right? Jesus is our, our brother. He's our Lord and our brother. And the Holy Spirit as our friend. He comforts us. He consoles us. He encourages us. So we see how God, who is love, draws us to himself. He draws us to himself to do what? To share in his life. To share in his life which he always had. So God shares, he gives us not only our natural life, but our supernatural life. And so when we celebrate the church on Pentecost, what were we doing? We were celebrating the Holy Spirit coming down. And when I, uh, we prayed, a lot of us, you know, I, I invited everyone to pray the novena. So for nine days, we prayed to, the Holy, to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We, we ask the Lord to pour out the Holy Spirit. And why did I invite all of us to do that? Because that's what Jesus said. Jesus said in the gospel, go to Jerusalem. He told all the apostles and disciples, go to Jerusalem and stay there for nine consecutive days. And he said, pray for the Holy Spirit. And once the Holy Spirit came, everyone did what? They spoke in tongues. They spoke in all these different languages to worship the one God. Different languages, different disciples, different apostles, all praying in tongues, speaking different languages, but to worship and give praise to the one God, the one Holy Trinity. And when they gave praise to God and the, the sign of the Holy Spirit was there, that was the revelation of the church. That's when the church came into being. But when we look to the cross, we see that the church existed at Calvary, but in an invisible way. 
because no one believed. When the apostles, when a, you know, St. John the Apostle was there at Calvary, our Blessed Mother, different disciples of women, they were there, but they didn't believe. They didn't believe that Jesus would rise again. The only one who believed was our Blessed Mother. She was the only one who believed. So she represents the church in a personal way. You know, she's the face of the church in a personal way. But she herself is also a daughter of the church. The church is the mother of our mother, the mother of God. The church is not just our mother, but she's the mother even of Our Lady. She's the mother of all of us. So we see that God reveals to us that he calls us to be drawn to this divine life. Amen. And he wants us to be patient. You know, every day we say a prayer to the Trinity, right? When we say in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Another prayer that we say to the Trinity is, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. So that glory be prayer, we pray with the rosary, we're acknowledging the three divine persons in Trinity. We're giving praise and thanksgiving to God. So the reason, you know, why we want to be in heaven, right, the reason why God draws us every day to follow Jesus, right, to look to the Father, to pray to the Father through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. When we pray this Mass, it's very Trinitarian, right? We're praying to the Father through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So he's doing this for us so that we can be able to worship God in heaven. Because when we go to heaven, you know, God will we make it to heaven, then we will understand the Trinity in a powerful way. But for now, we walk by faith, you know, not by sight. So each day, we are called to give praise and thanks to God for giving us our, our natural life, for our divine life. And so we're called to be patient. We're called to continue to be patient that every time we turn to the Trinity with eyes of faith, when we turn to the Holy Trinity, we're doing what we're called to do. We're called to love God. God, the Holy Trinity, created us to love him, to know him, and to serve him in this life so that we're with him forever in heaven. So that's our vocation. That's our calling. No matter where we are on our spiritual journey, we're called to, to acknowledge the Trinity, to, to be drawn to show our attention, attention to each divine person, because they're all equal. But each divine person is humble. You see the humility of the divine person. Jesus always, he's always bragging about the Father. He's always like, look what the Father can do. He's always pouring attention to the Father, right? And the Father's always bringing attention to his Son. He glorifies the Son. And the Holy Spirit always brings attention to Jesus and the Father. Each divine person is humble, always revealing the other and not bringing attention to, the, to themselves, right? So it's so hard for us to understand, I know, this mystery and to see how it kind of translates to our own, our own practical life. But in a practical way, basically, it just helps us to realize that we're loved and that we're called to love. I mean, that's basically where we can see how God loves us through each divine person and he gives us that love so to express that love to each other. And that's how we can take the mystery of the Trinity in a personal way and just practice it, by just praying to each divine person who is loved and calling us to love each other as they love us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.